Hello folks, I'm L.A. Little and this is your daily TA wrap. Where we take a look at these markets from a neoclassical perspective and we ask ourselves what happened today and what does it tell us about tomorrow. I do the show four times a week, Monday through Thursday, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time here from the base of the beautiful Rocky Mountains. Folks, we had another up day last night. I told you that uh, I was expecting a pullback. It tried and tried, but it couldn't do it. We got a we got a big push down mid morning, but they came right back in and bought it. Took this market back up. I do a show every Sunday as well. You can always reach me if you are interested in talking to me. The chat room, and then of course you got to get a, you just go over and get your login on live stream if you want to do that. You can email me. You can also text me at this number 303-912-9110, and I'll answer your questions on air as best I can, if I can. As far as what happened today, uh, you know, no excuses. Uh, it went up, and you know, I do expect it's going to come right back, but at the same time. You know, the two bar reversals, what looked like potential um, evening star dojis ended up not being the case, uh, as was uh, forecast. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. They did lead to some hesitation, but this market overpowered them. The industrials were up 75 and a half, 15,467. We had the, the uh, S&Ps tack on another 10. 1754, almost three quarters. The composite, not nearly as much, nine and a half higher, 39, 29, 50. And this is notable because your your strongest indexes have been the composite, the NDX, and the Russell. They were the weakest today. The the uh, NDX tacked on five and three quarters, 3387 basically, and the Russell up three. 1115 and a half. Gold was up big today. We had, uh, it looks like oil, my oil is off the index here. Let's see if we can get that one back on. But we had gold up big. Um, it was up about 30, 35 bucks. A, a big part of that all came out as a result of what spurred on the market this morning supposed to be released two or three weeks ago, finally got released this morning. Those numbers showed less employment uh, growth in terms of jobs created. Of course, that means, uh, you know, to, to all the, the folks watching the Fed that the Fed can just keep the foot full throttle. That, of course, fueled the move. Now, it didn't probably matter how those numbers printed. If they printed stronger or weaker, you were probably going to see a a shot higher because the, everybody believes the Fed uh, is on hold anyway. Uh, they did take those gains away. They almost brought it back to even. They brought it negative on the NASDAQ. Uh, and then part of that uh, was uh, the Netflix turnaround today as, as the company's chairman was talking down his stock. It's not often you see that. Uh, but it was a, a topsy-turvy day, and you know when you see this gyrations taking place, and we'll look at the charts here in a second, uh, you can tell something's going on, and uh, it, you know it's it's getting to where it wants to turn. Oil was down, dollar was uh, down again off of those numbers, another half a percent. This thing's breaking down into those lower lows we looked at. Uh, bonds were up pretty big today, up a full point, I believe. Let's go to the charts. Let's see what they look like and see what they tell us. We'll start with the S&Ps as usual. So here we go, S&Ps, what do we get here? A nice big spike up. So we had the doji yesterday, that was an evening star, but the way that has to complete to actually be one is you need a down day the next day. We didn't get that, we actually started up and just continued up. We spiked up as high as 1760 it looks like, almost 1760. Remember, we had an ABCD target on the weekly. We had two of them, if you remember. Uh, actually, I talked about this Sunday night, which uh, the broadcast kind of got messed up, so let's go over it again together. We had two ABCD structures. 
You had a smaller one that was from this price point up, down, and back up. So you had A, B, a C, and up. That one projected to about 1740. We've already gone over that, right? We, we, we traded over that already, 1745 yesterday, and today we extend higher, get as high as 60 almost. The larger one was from here. So you had an A here, a B up there, your C down here, and then the projection up. It's over. That thing projects to about 1780. We got as high as 60, so we're about 20 points away from completion of the larger structure that was in place. And and that, you know, I thought the 1740, actually I think it was like 1745. I thought that would probably hold it. I take that back, it was 1750. We could go do, do the calculation, but it was 1750 because it was round number, 1745 to 1750. So that round number, I thought, would turn us. Uh, they didn't. They powered over it today. They did leave a suspect breakout. Usually those come back within six bars. Now, if this doesn't make it back within six bars, that increases the probabilities greatly that they're going to buy it. Remember, we had a gap right there and the high. So if you come back after six bars, I would think that gap, that high, is going to be the buy uh, almost certainly. And those are kind of blind block blind buys, if you will, uh, when they occur uh, because the probabilities are so good. The Dow had a lot of strength today too. We had a bunch of earnings in the Dow. The Dow pokes up into resistance finally. And what it has been trying to do is get back into this big down bar. Uh, the price point on that bar low was 15,448. We got into it, 154. 67 was the close, so we close into it. And you know how that works, a bar or two into it, you'll try to reach the other side. So if this market's gonna turn, you're gonna expect it to turn here and fell at this point, and, and, and to do so within a bar or two. Now let's go to the strong indexes, which were the weaker ones today. NASDAQ composite to start with. The high yesterday, and again, yesterday you had an even better setup here and had this pulled back and not made a new high, this would have been an evening star doji. Black candle, which is even better. The high yesterday, 39, 31.45. We go over it. We close underneath it. We have more volume. That says that we can go right back up and test that high again tomorrow uh, in that we put more volume in. It also says that we're getting a little more shaky here in that we left... Uh, some volume as we pulled back today. If you look intraday, uh, there was a lot of down volume that was taking place today. But nevertheless, this thing closes at a higher high. Excuse me, it makes a higher high, closes underneath it, but has higher volume, which is not a good reversal sign. And remember, we failed on the reversals yesterday on the SPX here on the IXIC, the NASDAQ composite. And on the NDX, we have the same sort of a setup here where it goes up, over, has more volume. And finally, if we look at the Russell, there was a reversal on it as well. And it failed yesterday, you know, it failed today to take advantage of yesterday's two bar reversal. So we had plenty of index setups that said we should reverse today and get some sort of a pull, pullback or sideways action at best. We still got more up. If you get more up when you should come down, either, either it's going to take another day to happen, which you know I don't like to look at it that way, or I'm looking at it wrong and there's something going on here that's you know stronger than I think, right? Or this market don't know what it's doing. And I don't usually decide that the market doesn't know what it's doing. I, it's usually me that doesn't know what's happening. So, you know, that throws a little bit of caution. It fails, potentially sets up the reversal. But we're getting close. You can tell we're getting close. But it's not there again tonight uh, as it was last night. Last night we did have, when we went over and looked at the sectors, we had a bunch of sectors that weren't quite ready. And that was the only mixed signal part of this and those sectors proved to be stronger today. Remember the IYT last night? 
had been multiple it had been breaking out on the time frames looked like it wanted to extend it did today it left a tail on the upside that's not good but at new highs we have the SMHs they just keep climbing day after day uh, let me see the high 41 42 they get over it they close under it but they have more volume let me see if the socks reads the same way and the socks actually reads the opposite gets over it back under it less volume so there's a mixed signal there as well so IYT stretches leaves a long tail on the top side that's not good SMHs SOX not telling exactly the same story one says we can go higher the other one doesn't XLB we thought would test the highs well it didn't just test them it blew them away 4378 you see volume was 5.5 against 5.2 and it has the volume on the break well that one can go higher XLE okay so XLE pushes volume let me see if it closed under 8724 this one had a failure yesterday another it was one of the few that had the two bar reversal yesterday so 8724 we close at 8703 so we go over back under more volume that it's set up like the indexes it can go back and test again tomorrow the XLF I believe ended up failing again let's see XLF let me bring this over to the weekly that was where we were measuring against so that volume I mean that high was 2093 so you get 1.6 and we're doing Let me see. So far this week, we've done two days, 600. So we're, we don't have the volume. We've gone over the top again, and it looks like we're going to fail again on the weekly, at least so far. So in the volume today, let me see. Yesterday's high was 2096, 311. And so, yeah, like the indexes, it actually did more volume today, so it can test again tomorrow, too. XLI gets over to high. It was going to go test it. It gets over. It has less volume. Let's see. 4801. And it closes over it. So that one can actually stretch some more too. So these the sectors are not showing failures. The XLK probably gave us a two bar today. Oh, but it has more volume. So it doesn't really matter, does it? Right? We stretch up there. We get over it, back under it. A lot of volume. We had a lot of volume come in uh, on Netflix and on Apple and a couple others so doesn't surprise me volume was big but I didn't think it was that big so that can that can actually test again too here we go with uh, the XLP oh look at this so the XLP has been in a range at top is 4219 we're at 4195 we got as high as 4203 that's going to be top of the range test and right now it looks like it's going to be a failed test. Let's see, XLU, XLP both benefited today with the interest rate climate and this one's testing the highs and doesn't have the volume so that's probably about as far as it's going to go. XLV was the only one coming off pretty hard and it goes right back up to test again. I saw Amgen after hours, we'll look at some of those. 5285, 5277, that looks that still looks like it's going to try to fail up there at resistance. And XLY was the other one like IYT that was trying to stretch higher and did. And that one still looks strong. So sector-wise, they tend to support the index idea that they can go back and test again tomorrow and try to push higher again. So as much as I dislike that because I'd like to see a pullback, um, it doesn't tell us we're going to get one. So yesterday it told us it would, today, and, and it didn't, right? Today it tells us that it's going to go higher. Let's see if tomorrow they surprise us it can't take it higher. Uh, but right now that looks to be the read. Let's go over to Ox Markets. I want to see 
in particular the dollar because the dollar is trying to break everything on the downside here. I'm bringing it over to the monthly. Okay, so the big bars on the monthly is 2084, and this one is the one it's going after 2107. So you can see here we've broken under everything on the weekly, and on the daily we did a retest, regenerate, and we regenerated lower today. 2134. So that's. Oh my. This is a mess. So 2134 closes almost at the, lot, the low, and that bar it's going after is 2107. It looks to me like it's going to go get it. Another ABCD structure down, you know, from the A point, 2165, 20. Yeah, it's going to take it close. So, dollar getting weaker should make gold stronger. That is what we saw today. The dollar, you know, gets hammered, gold flies the other way. So, gold spikes up. Remember, gold couldn't pull back. And so, with gold not pulling back, you kind of felt like it was going to go up and try to test the other end of this range off this big bar. That's what it's doing. It's got to get over the high first. It's got the volume. I suspect it's already got over one of them. It's going to get over the other one tomorrow and then go back up here and test this area one more time. And gold wanted to go higher. Let's see what silver did. And I believe silver probably was stronger today. And it went about the same, but decent volume again. So this one also is going to go test that high. The thing I did talk about, it looks like it actually did happen today, was the USO broke down. It looked like it was, was getting ready to break down. Uh, it, in fact, did break down. Volume expands one more time. Let's look at the weekly because that's where we were measuring. This one's trying to get into the high to start with. That's 30... 553 it got as low as 3543 is where it closed got as low as um, get that up a little bit 65 excuse me 3539 was the low closed at 43 so you're into that bar yeah it's going to dig deeper tomorrow it looks to me like it's going to get towards the bottom of that swing point high, do a full retest regen off this area, which is about 3446, 3450 or so. Another buck. That that that's the target. And weekly volume 16, that's 8, that's 40. So volume's expanding on the way down. And 40 into this would be just about the same volume. So it's probably going to come down there, hit it with as much volume, get your bounce, come back up, fell again, and come back down again and test again. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So those were the main things. Silver, oh, bonds. Let's see what bonds did right quick. Okay, so bonds. Yeah, they're getting up into that guy just where they were trying to go. So it's 10. 837-107-76. Yeah, they hit it. And they got into it and stayed into it. And they got the volume on the daily. So you get over the swing point highs. This is where we were trying to test to. You get over the swing point highs. You test into resistance. And even though the last resistance bar looks like it almost held, it went right to the top of it. So, so what you're going to see is you're going to see this thing try to get some more juice tomorrow, which, quote unquote, should be decent for stocks as a result, and move up into this next bar, right, these next two bars. And this is the meat of the resistance on the way back up. And so the big bar is there, 107.76, which is where it just got into. And the next one is 108. 837. I suspect that's the one that's going to stop it. And that's another, what, 50 cents or so. So bonds a little bit higher. And then they'll probably get another retrace. Now, they have a weekly ABCD structure now. Let's see what that measures to. 102.19. 
So it's about five onto this one for a rough number. It gives you uh, 109, 109.27. So that will actually get it into the bar and actually right to the top of this one almost, the next swing point high. So, so deeper into resistance, and that's where you'll probably get the next failure and then a comeback. And then we'll see. have a couple questions. Uh, I see one over here. Uh, Tommy says, I asked about the refiners yesterday. Is it better for this group to have a falling oil price? I was looking at TSO and VLO. Uh, yeah, short-term trades. Um, well, the spread is, is what the refiners care, care about. And what I mean by that is, you know, oil is refined to make gas, to make other types of, uh, you know, heavier weight fuels, airplane fuels, so forth, right? That refining process, of course, you end up with distillates and you sell those. And so what you can get for them, right, gives you the spread. So if you're buying oil, just make it simple, you're buying oil for $100 a barrel and once you distill it, maybe it's worth 115 and you put, you know, in terms of all the different distillates that you come out with, and then maybe you put, you know, $10 into it so you got a $5 spread. Well, if gasoline prices stay where they are, which is a large part of what gets refined, right, percentage-wise, if that price stays constant and the price of oil is coming down, then that spread's going to widen, and they call it the crack spread, right? If that widens, then that spread is in the benefit of the refiners, and therefore they make more money. And so that, that spread is what you're interested in. It's not necessary. You know, if oil prices come down and gas prices come down too, it doesn't matter. The spread stays the same. But it looks like gas prices are holding while oil is coming down, and that's going to make the spread wider, which is going to benefit the refiners. Um, so, so that was that was the idea. Uh, there's also a question uh, here in terms of looking at these, and if you if you are a member, you can pop in here and you can actually pull these up. Uh, sector trends. And the question has to do with, like, if you type in VLO, uh, then that will take you to that group. And then, and then all of these are in the group. And the question is, is can you sort these? Well, you can sort based on uh, these, you know, trends. So if you short-term trend, you can put it in the most bearish ones, the most bullish ones, and so forth. So you can see them in terms of where they are in their trend. But you can also um, uh, add these to a watch list, you know, and, 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 and look at them there. Uh, I thought we had, huh, I thought we had an export on this too, to where you could put them in a spreadsheet. Maybe I'm remembering wrong. We have it on most of them. And yeah, maybe we'll have to export that so that you can export them. Then you can sort them any way you want in an you know, Excel spreadsheet. Um, you can you you can certainly click on the column and you know and, and usually the way I'm interested is what's most bullish, you know in this particular case these are getting bullish on the short term but their intermediate term isn't yet so I'd want to know the strongest ones in the intermediate term, and so if I sort on those then I can look at them like uh, if I'm glancing down on here most of them are not, you know VLO is sideways. And bullish, bullish, confirmed on the short term. So that's not a bad setup there in terms of the trading cube. This basically is the bottom row of the trading cube. Western refinery, you got this one even looks better. So if I were to look at that particular chart, for example, and then it pops up all of these charts. And if I grab the daily one here, you can see how that one looks. Let's see what the weekly looks like. Yeah, and the weekly is, you see the weekly is already over the highs. Doesn't have the volume though, so I think you have to wait on these guys to come back, right? Uh, but they're but you definitely should have them on your radar list because I think they're going to be valuable. So, so that that's the explanation. I had another question. Uh, fact, uh, 
text message to me here. Let me see what this one is. Uh, Cree. Cree is gapping down after hours. And the question is, is should we try to potentially buy at two big anchor bars on 814? Let me get Cree up and let's look and see what this looks like. So we got an 814, 10-1 bars. That must be on the weekly or is it on the daily? I guess it's on the daily here. So you got a bar here on the 8, on the 10-1 and the 814, right? You got a support zone there. That's the green bar. And this thing gapped down after hours. Let me see where it's trading or where it traded to after hours. So Cree earnings tonight closes at 63. In that area, 62.69. Isn't it amazing how they come right back to support? You know, you can get a bounce trade off of this potentially tomorrow because of that big volume, but I, I'm almost certain this thing's going to do big volume tomorrow. You, this is not something you want to hold, and the reason for that is you bring this over and look at the weekly. This is, this is a classic setup. This happens over and over. I think we talked about it last night on a different stock. Uh, we talked about it on Netflix where they'll have a huge sell-off. I think it was Netflix. Anyway, we talked about it on some stock. They'll have a huge sell-off, right? Big volume. They'll find themselves. They'll come all the way back up there and test it again, and that's where they'll fail, right? And then it's over. It's probably over. And so this, to me, at best, is going to be some sort of a sideways range trade at best. But it could be all over. And so it's not something I want to try to buy and hold if anything, potentially you take a bounce trade off of it, a $10 down on this one would put it down, uh, what is it, about 15% probably, right, off the close today. So 15% is enough to probably take a shot at a bounce trade if you want, but that's all I would do. I'd flip it. I wouldn't stay in it. So uh, that, that would be the way I look at that one. Let's, uh, while we have a couple minutes left, let me quickly flip through some of these earnings. So I want to go to Netflix. There was a great question last night about Netflix and what to do about it because it had skyrocketed on earnings. And I said that you're going to see a big reversal bar. And when you see it in volume expand, that's probably going to tell you that you shouldn't be in it. And man, then we get a reversal bar. We got it on the daily. And it's probably going to print on the weekly, which is what I was talking about. Right? Do you want to see it print on the weekly? Well, you have a very big high. You got volume expanding. You're two days in. If this thing does trade lower, which it looks like it could, then you're going to end up with a big reversal bar here, which tells you this big move is over. And so Netflix was, you know, if, if you got out this morning, that was a good one. I, I think I suggested taking some of it off this morning and then seeing whether the rest of it wanted to trade to. Uh, hopefully you, you made your money and got out. Uh, we had Amgen after hours. I'm going to flip through these just in order here. So Amgen trades to, um, looks like about after hours, what did we get to? 118. So that's going to get over the highs here, just barely. Uh, I want to quickly look at a couple that I'm interested in, and then I want to call it a night. I want to go to iRobot. This is one that, to me, is a very interesting one. Uh, iRobot doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Cree we looked at. How about Panera Bread? I didn't see what it did. Yeah, this one's not going anywhere either. So, you know, we've had about nine days of earnings. We had one day of the nine that they bought. The rest of them have mostly been sold. I'm looking over the earnings tonight I see Whirlpool from yesterday and, and this morning. I see Whirlpool traded higher. VM Software uh, lost most of what it was trying to gain. Uh, I see a mining company that did well, but all the miners did well today. Netflix got hammered. Um, I, don't see, I don't see hardly anything doing well uh, anywhere outside of what I just mentioned. There's a... Uh, Aerospace, uh, LMT did okay today, not bad, but that's about it. Most of the earnings are getting sold. They're not getting bought, right? And when you see that over and over and over, you have to pay attention to it, right? I mean, that's from today. If we go back to last week, somebody says GE did well. That was last Friday. 
Thursday, Friday last week was the only time they bought earnings across the board. Every other day, it's been a sell. It was a sell again today. And what I'm saying is I'm taking and looking at the largest piece of them and saying, okay, what did the majority do? Mar majority are getting sold off. The generals are leading this market up. The generals can't lead it forever. You know, you got to get some troops following you up the hill pretty soon. It's not happening. That, to me, is a warning sign. And if, if that's, you know, it doesn't mean we're going to crater, but that definitely doesn't mean I want to be buying this at these highs. Let it come back. Be patient. You know, it's a, it's a lot better to miss opportunity than to be missing your money. Folks, I appreciate you being there. Have a great night. I'll catch you tomorrow. We'll do it all again. Uh, I still expect this market's going to have difficulty. Even though it's showing us it wants to go higher tomorrow, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't be buying it blindly uh, because of that. Have a great one. Take care. Good night, folks. Thank mm -hmm. you.